Thank you very much. I think, I think that's really provides a trajectory for the youngsters. There are lessons learned and key messages um, shared. May I now call upon Dr. Margaret uh, Ellis, um, again within this, this multi-generation, multi-stakeholder sub-theme to do her presentation. Well, I would like to begin by thanking Mr. Njai for the invitation. I connected with Mr. Njai late in 2017, and I had an opportunity to meet him face to face this last summer when I came down to work here in the Gambia for two months. And I, was, I had just almost wrapped up a manuscript for my second book. The first book was on influence, and the second book was talking about legacy. And so in studying Mr. Jai and following him and seeing the work that he's doing, not only in the Gambia but in Africa, I was really thrilled and excited to have a Gambian in the Gambia to feature in my book, to talk about legacy and the fact that it is possible. <laughs> legacy is possible. So thank you, Mr. Njai, for being a voice of influence and being a, a, a beacon of hope in the country. I really appreciate you. Well, my topic, I'll be focusing on talking about the multi-generations. How can we leverage the different generations to go from transition to transformation. And when we talk about generations, it's important to know that there are three generations in question here. The, in every society, there are the Gen Xs, and then you have the baby boomers, and then you have the millennials in every society. And for a society to transition, move forward in any society, all generations need to be included in the implementation, the planning, the leadership of that nation. And because if you're looking at the Gambia through my lenses, I believe that leadership is a glorifying need in our nation. And so my presentation will focus on how can we leverage the multi-generations in leadership specifically. The uh, leadership expert John Maxwell says that everything, not some things, but everything rises and falls on leadership. Which means that if there is no leadership, it does not matter how much funding that comes into this nation. It doesn't matter how much education we have. It doesn't matter how much training, how much money we invest and time in training people. If people are not trained to manage what has been given to them and to lead with integrity and authenticity, we are not going to move forward as a nation. And so when I talk as the founder of Coaches of Influence Foundation and I work with youth and women globally to inspire youth and women to find their why in life. Every human being in every generation has a responsibility over some sphere of society. And if people are not given an opportunity to rule in the areas that they are supposed to rule in, now they become a problem. So the reason we complain about youth and the fact that they're unruly these days and the fact that youth are a problem because the youth have a hunger to belong. <laughs> and they have not been given that opportunity to play their role in their sphere of society that they are called to lead and to transform. So when that happens, people become disruptive because they, they call for attention. So their unruly behavior is a call out. Hey, we are here and we want to get involved. So we need to, we need to keep that in mind. And so when we, there is a school of thought. We, we Gambia was literally born in 1965 when we were given independence. And there was a school of thought that was established back then or that we adopted that leadership is only meant for a certain group of people, a certain gender, and a certain age group. And somehow that mold has not been broken yet. Somehow we are still operating. We are free but not really free. Because there is a culture that was established and culture has a way of stifling freedom and advancement if culture is not evaluated and updated. 
So I think for the Gambia, we have gone to the point where we need to evaluate our culture and some areas of our culture need to be updated. And that area especially focuses on bringing youth and women to the platform because they have skills, they have talent, and they have something to contribute to take us to the next stop. Nice, and one thing that, that inspires me is, uh, so when, we, when I study societies, because I work around the globe with several leaders of nations and different societies, doing leadership training and coaching and coaching people and individuals and speaking. And I have found that in most societies, it is believed that a new generation of people is born every 40 years. Talking about what Mr. Jai talked about this morning, the quarters. Every 40 years, a new generation is born. So if Gambia was literally born in 1965, it means that at this day, this present day today, we have given birth to one generation and we are 13 years late in handing over the baton of leadership to that generation. Because in 33 years from today, we are going to birth another generation of leaders. And the current leaders in place today cannot influence that generation that's coming in 33 years. So it's about time that we position this current generation so they can influence and transform the generation that's to come in 33 years. So talking about how do we leverage the different generations to make sure that we are able to move our country forward. Well, the young people bring a different, bring a characteristics to the table that's needed in this country. Young people bring vision and creativity to the table. Whereas the older generation, they are stuck on process, process, process. <laughs> it's like a computer that's, that's frozen. Yes. We are just frozen on process and structure, but it's a, it's a myth. It doesn't really exist. Because when I look at the Gambia through my lenses again, you may not see what I see, but through my lenses, when I look at the Gambia, I don't see process and I don't see structure. Yeah. It's a facade. Very it's, a, it's a way of stalling advancement. So we need to get to a place where we're giving the people that can come to the table with creativity and vision. Because vision is everything. Without vision, a people perish. And so we need vision to take us forward. That's, that's what the young generation, the present leaders today, the notion that youth are only future leaders and not current influencers is not correct. Yeah. Youth are present day leaders. Because leadership is a process. And you begin by training people from a young age to become that old leader that moves a nation forward. So I want to focus on just three points that I brought to the table. Three things we can do to leverage the expertise of all leaders, I mean all generations, to move Gambia forward. One would be dialogue. Dialogue. What we are doing here is really key. When people come to the table with solutions, we are able to move a nation forward. So dialogue must be, must be encouraged. TAFCON should not only be once a year, but I'm not putting this on TAF. I'm saying that this is the responsibility of this nation to begin. I hope that TAF has set the, the ball rolling and has created a model for them to follow. That it is about time we have several forums like this throughout the year to bring people to the platform so we can dialogue about our issues and the way forward. And another way is the second point is education. I am an educator. I believe in education. Education transformed me. I am born in Lamin from a very humble family. If I can be called a doctor today and given a seat at the platform, it's because of education. So education is key. And one of the speakers this morning said that education is an equalizer. That is so true. I cannot even argue with that. It is so true. And people, the reason why we need to embrace educating our society is because people cannot rise above the knowledge that they acquire. I want you to think about I want that to be a nugget. Let it drop. People cannot rise above the knowledge that they receive. 
So whatever people know, they can operate to that capacity. If we want to move forward and be a Gambia that we are all hungry for, we need to begin to educate people to the level of the Gambia that we want to see. And the third point is inclusiveness. Inclusiveness. Everybody has something to bring to the table. Women need to be given a platform. Youth need to be brought up. Because if you are again looking at the Gambia through my lenses, I see a generation of leaders that's about to fade out. Mm -hmm. Whether it is by voting or by nature. They're about to fade out. And I don't see a lineup of young people being trained and brought, brought to the table to prepare them for the baton. And, and when are we going to get to a place where we're handing a healthy baton for people to keep running? It's about time. And that time is now. Leadership is a process. And we need to start training and raising a lineup of people now for the baton. And so in, in closing, I would just like to, to bring an example to the table that this is possible, what I'm talking about, bringing youth to the table is possible. And in the country of Guyana, it's a country that I work with, and this is what I saw in Guyana that I think Gambia can adopt. And what I saw there is that in every leadership position at the national level, there is a senior and a junior person in that position. So for example, in the, in the ministries, they have a minister of health, Minister of Education. That person who is called the minister is always a senior person, I mean an older generation. And then they have a minister within the Ministry of Education, a minister in the Ministry of Health, a minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and that person is a young person. So what is Guyana doing? Guyana is from the onset always preparing somebody for the baton. And because they have a mixture of the senior and the junior leader at the table, working side by side, sharing an office space, it means that every time a topic comes up, you have diverse ideas, skills and creativity, vision. You have somebody who is stuck on process, and you have somebody who can see the vision. We That's right. Definitely adopt that. So I believe that I, I would not do this, my country justice if I came here and not share with you what I've learned in other places that I think we can adopt. It's about time that the older generation don't hug everything and get selfish about everything. Everybody in this world that was created was created for a purpose. And everybody has a purpose to fulfill. And some of the people of the Gambia, their purpose is leadership. So if one person hoards the leadership, hoards the platform, and doesn't give them an opportunity to be whom they have become, then they turn from becoming a citizen to becoming a problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ellis.